verse 3. So they set the ark of God. So they go down, and these are friendly people that have the ark. It says, so they set the ark of God on a new cart, and they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, and Uzzah and Ahu, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. Now, do you see a problem with the way they're moving the ark? Well, if you went with us through Leviticus and, and all, they were supposed to carry the ark on poles, and only priests were to carry the ark on poles. Again, the whole idea of the tabernacle, like you being separate, you being outside, is the fact that God is holy. And, and the whole idea of not touching the ark and treating it as a common thing is God is holy. He's separated in his moral goodness. He's perfect and we're sinners. We don't have the right to just mamby a pamby approach God in our sin, right? And so, so that's what all this separation is about. And so you're not supposed to just go up and touch it and, you know, want to touch the ark or whatever. You're not supposed to mess around with these things because there's this separation between God and man. Why did God do that? Well, one of the reasons is when Jesus Christ died on the cross and his righteousness was transferred upon us, we now have direct access to God. And when Jesus breathed his last, what happened to the dividing wall between the, 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 the holy place or the place of fellowship and the inner place? The curtain, the thick curtain that separated the two was, was ripped in the middle from where? Top to bottom. It's like God's up there just going. Whoosh. Now you can have access. And so all this idea of holiness is a picture for us to know. You don't have access on your own. You cannot say your good works can give you access. Your access has to be made through Jesus, period. Right? And so you're supposed to treat it with respect. Okay? And, and so they're supposed to move it in the way God wanted them to move it. They're not supposed to put their hands on it, so on and so forth. It's supposed to be on the shoulders and the shoulders of priests carried on these poles that go into the ark. And so where did they get this idea of putting it on a cart? Who had just put it on a cart? The Philistines, right? So it's so funny because the church gets this idea that we should imitate the world in order to be successful as a church. You guys see that? So if the world likes rock concerts, let's have a rock concert in the church. If we like smoke machines and laser lights, let's do smoke machines and laser lights. You know, and guys, if that's not church focus and they want to do that, that's fine, whatever. But if they're trying to draw people with that, they're trying to do it like the Philistines, right? If that is their only draw, you know, and uh, it's funny because it's really rare that people come to me and they say, you're such a good speaker. But I get a lot of compliments. And the compliments are this. I love it that you teach the Bible. And I'm like, that's what I want you here for. I don't want you here because I'm a good speaker. I want you here because the Bible's taught. Right? And then, you know, and... Sometimes our worship team is really good, and sometimes we're not as good as far as the world's observation of the worship team is. But I always think, what does God think of our worship team? What does God think of the hearts that are up there? What does God think of the purposes of us having certain people up there? You know, for a lot of churches, you know, the worship team is a draw, and therefore it's not a ministry. But we want our worship team to glorify God and to be a ministry for people that are in it, right? So if someone is struggling and they want to be a part of the team and they've been a part of the team, we're not just going to kick them out because they need to be a part of the team. That team becomes their closest friends and family. See what I'm saying? It's a ministry. It's not just a tool because we don't have tryouts and kick out everybody that doesn't qualify, you know? And it's funny because I get, sometimes we get criticism. Why? Because the band's supposed to be the draw. And I look at him and go, well, wait a second. The band's not for you anyways. The band's to worship God. You're not the recipient of our worship, and you're not the target of our worship. God is the target of our worship. Now, when people hear me say it, they're like, oh, yeah, that's right. 
and I'll have people apologize. And I don't say it rudely. I just say, you know what? It's interesting because when I was a kid, worship was not contemporary Christian music. They were two separate things, right? And now they're not two separate things because I listen to the radio for entertainment. You know what it is? It's worship music, right? Now they've blended. Now we might think, well, that's great, but it does something to us, doesn't it? We begin to think that the worship music is to entertain us instead of to worship God, right? So, so we start thinking we got to draw people in a worldly way. And that's why I don't freak out with empty seats in the church, right? Because I, we can get a lot of people here. All I have to do is read one book and follow it to the T, and we'll gather a lot of people here. But my messages are only going to be a half an hour. Some of you are saying amen. <laughs> And they're going to be topical and three points every time. There'll be a lot of advertising. So it's instead of just using our radio station and your lives as, adver as advertising, <laughs> you know, we'll be sending out $10,000, $15,000 worth of flyers a month. And this is the MO. This is the plan. Because that's the way the world does it, right? You get ads in your newspaper. You get ads in your, you know, you buy all this ad on Facebook or whatever. You know, let's do it the way the world does it. But the Bible says unless the Lord builds the house... He who builds the house actually labors in vain. And I use this illustration again and again, and I'm sorry, but hopefully some of these things are just pounded into your head that you know them so well. But an empty drum, if you hit it, is very loud. A drum that's full of sustenance goes thunk, thunk, right? But which one's more valuable? The loud one or the one that's full, right? And I'm not saying, I'm not saying that every big church is an empty barrel. I'm not saying every small church is a full barrel, right? I'm not saying that at all. But God knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart behind what's going on in that church. Why do you do what you do, right? So David follows the Philistines' lead in how to bring, carry the ark, what? Come on, you got to know better. Read the scriptures. Guys, the ark was gone. They still had the scriptures. 